promised too early on, I told you guys we have a guest right here in studio. We'll be engaging them. They are from Kenya. They play awesome music. We've played you a couple of their songs. We'll play another one in a few. But if you don't know about them, they're just a Nairobi best, uh, you know, Nairobi best alternative. Alternative? A little bit of punk, yeah. all that good, <laughs> awesome back. Okay, we knew them as a duo, but we could just set now to attack you. So we're yeah. just gonna let them reintroduce themselves <laughs> to us because uh, it's not how we knew that. So I'm gonna start right here with a beautiful lady, Twanziapa Tkendevo. They say ladies first, right? Yeah. Okay, so what's up? How you doing? I'm fine. Good to finally meet you in person. Kindly introduce yourself. I, um, my ID identifies yeah. <laughs> me as Madeline Albright, mm -hmm. uh, the band Ali. Mm -hmm. I am the lead vocalist. Okay. I'm happy to be here. Good to have you. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah. And then we have, uh, he's not new to the studio, he's not new to the show, he's not new to the scene. <laughs> Everybody knows him, like in uh, still. <laughs> yeah, a couple of times, that's true. I know, <laughs> yeah. So my name is Colbert Akunga, mm -hmm. and I play guitar and bass group right and then we have hello yeah so my name is Edwin mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff mm -hmm. maybe that's why I'm not on the posters so oh. <laughs> usually on like every set uh -huh. every video or yeah. almost in, in the studio in the mm -hmm. wedding, so uh, allow me to interject. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's underselling himself a bit. I know, he's, he's, he's just being, you know, humble and just, you know. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we'll blow his trumpet for him. Yeah, um, <laughs> So, okay, there's a whole backstory behind the funkettes and how we begin and where, where we've come from, what we've done. I think we'll get to that eventually. Yeah. But we actually began the group with him oh. in 2011. Yeah. 11. It was 2011, 2010. Yeah. 2011. So, mm -hmm. Such a long time ago. It was very many moons ago. And mm -hmm. I think between, <laughs> between then and now, I think we've seen so much. Yeah. We've seen new presidents. Presidents have died. Nice. We've seen COVID. We've seen monkeypox. We've seen a new president. The queen has died. But here we are today. <laughs> um, all these 12 years later, but we'll get into that later. But I think it's important mm -hmm. just to underline that we began the journey with him. Yeah. And he's still here very many years later. Awesome, I know that. But since you guys began, you went on a hiatus, a very long one. Because knowing you, I know you from Rush. Yes. I didn't know you from Funk Ed. So that's tell that's us, that. between 2011 and uh, 2020, I can say like you've been active since 2021. 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020, 2020. Yeah. So between that time, it's almost 10 years. What was happening between that time? <clears throat> I guess for us as a group, um, it was a point of finding ourselves. Right. Of course, we went through the whole debacle that people go through. There's no money. Um, you're finding yourself. You're finding your sound. You're trying to find your way in life. And then I joined other bands at that point in time. Um, we were in university. So we proceeded with other things. And I guess at that point, mm -hmm. we began to chase new projects. Yeah. And then... Fortunately or unfortunately, um, COVID happened. Yeah. And when COVID happened, in all that free time, uh, I made the decision to reignite the group mm -hmm. and see what we could pick up from the fireplace. Yeah. And that's when I looked for her yeah. in a rush related story. <laughs> <laughs> and then we began to write again, and here we are. Of course. And you want to talk, you have to tell us everything. But before then, for the guys at home who haven't heard about you, Oh yeah, this project. I think it will only be fair if Max played that for us, and then we come and talk uh, some more, right? Ladies and gentlemen, who breathes by the Fankets? <laughs>
The audio and of course the visuals because Max right here thinks the song is mastered really well. So tell us about that. Mm. Can't believe I didn't mention his name. <laughs> is it worthy? How Shame it is on definitely him. worthy. Ah, um, big shame. <laughs> always doing his thing, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, we've had a very nice relationship with him. On mm -hmm. um, this project in particular, mm -hmm. he said, "You know what? You play some I got you. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> So he came through by an excellent with an excellent fellow by the name of Wilson. Mm -hmm. So they came and did the video and expect way better. This was already good, but expect way better visual. Oh, yeah, more coming, more in store. We love to hear it. And of course, for her, like uh, especially coming for coming to a scene like this, how does that make you feel? You know, like when they started, it was very rock was very male dominated. Mm -hmm. But seeing like you now being uh, a lead guitar, now uh, lead uh, vocalist in a band like Fan Cats, then yeah. we have the likes of Rich. We have now oh, to the blind. There are a lot of uh, women coming up in the rock scene. How does that make you feel? Women power. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, it makes me feel good. In fact, the other day I was just listening to Hubris, then it clicked and I loaded. I was like, hiya, I am a lead vocalist and I'm a lady in a rock band. I know. It's a male dominated you know, area. You know, yeah. like you're doing it. Yeah, so um, not to toot my horn, but I'm very proud of myself. Right, <laughs> and, 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 and it should be. As yeah, should be. yeah. Um, right. It didn't come so hard though, because I like rock. So, finding this opportunity through a Rush-related story <laughs> <Right. laughs> happens to be like, uh, you know, when opportunity meets preparedness. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's really amazing, but we, we want to hear that Rush-related story because, like you mentioned earlier, <laughs> Colbert right here plays for Rush band who are only bad, you know, 
two times a female winning rock band in Kenya from Kenya. Tell us about that. How did the link up happen? How did you guys meet? And of course, we met from Edwin, you started with him, right? Back in 2011. But you, how did you guys meet? Because you're very new to the band. Yeah, um, so I went for auditions. Oh. For a background vocalist. There's no way. You guys had auditions? <laughs> yeah. Hey. Okay. But I ended up getting a bigger chunk of the meat. Ah, being nice. a yeah. lead vocalist. So, again, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> and we are proud of you. And first, um, Edwin maybe can tell us about uh, hubris because most of us have no idea what it means. When we talk about some hubris, we have no <laughs> Until you listen to the song, you're like, oh, hubris. It's hubris. Yeah. So, tell us that. What does that even actually mean? So, uh, as usual, Ozzy is our lead uh, songwriter. So, mm -hmm. hubris is just a big word for like. Uh, being proud and arrogant <laughs> so <laughs> that's where it starts and then so okay, the way the band works at times is i'll do like a scratch track mm -hmm. like a sketch of a song i'll send it to ozzy and then yeah. he will go through it so he changes this change this and then once that is done he'll start writing then it's a lot of back and forth Oh. But for this one, he, he and Albright, I think, did oh. most of the creative side. Okay. So this one, I was, I feel like, uh, I was just riding the wave for this one. That one, so. you're just like, you know what, you guys take the lead on yeah, this Yeah, it, it's good, it's, it, it's going. It's in a great, way. I trust you. Yeah. Do the so. thing. So, Ozzy and uh, Albi, maybe you guys can tell us about that. And just before that, Ozzy, does it have anything to do with uh, Ozzy as well? No. Yeah, Ozzy, of course. All right, so tell us about that. How, what inspired it and uh, how did that come about? All right. Um, what most people wouldn't know is that a lot of these songs are, were not recorded very recently. So, Hubris, I wrote it in 2015. Oh. And a lot of these songs, 147, I think, was 20. 2012. Mm -hmm. so and Abrasion too. Abrasion was also 2010. So wow. most of the music we are releasing right now is... It is already in, done. It's, reco it's recorded over two time periods, 2011 and 2015. Mm -hmm. So what you are writing now, you will probably hear it in 2023, 2024. Mm -hmm. yeah, about, yeah, about. Nice. So we have our ducks in a row. Like yeah. fine wine, yeah. you know. <laughs> when, I hubris, when I did Hubris, mm -hmm. um, I talk specifically about the lyrics. Mm -hmm. If you listen to our, our, our other three tracks, the lyrics are rather somber and fatalistic. So they like are drive. Bit, yeah, they are a bit um, dark. Mm -hmm. So for Hubris, um, at that point in time, I realized I'm doing too much mm -hmm. gloomy, too much gloomy music. So why don't we do a song that is all about energy? Not, yes. Yeah. I can do this. I can try this. So it's it's basically about believing in your abilities way more than you should, mm -hmm. but in a positive sense. Right. So it's just saying, can I climb this mountain? Probably not, but you know what? I think I can. I'll try it. Yeah. So it's just basically excessive self-belief. Mm. To you a like fault. That. To a fault, actually, but yeah. Ah, nice. And Albi, of course, you love rock music, and we love rock music, that's why we're here, but rock is not super commercial. Mm. So are you doing rock, like, for the passion you have for it among some Nina Kikuja, like, you know, from Universal Music, they're like, oh, bro, like, we've heard your voice, and uh, you're wasting your talent, come this side. Like, uh, you think you're going to do that, or you're just here because you're, like, really passionate, and this is what you want to do long term? Um, if the Universal guy comes, mm -hmm. and... <laughs> <laughs> And there's a chance to multitask, mm -hmm. then I could, because, you know, there are these deals that you could do, maybe I'm doing a backing track for a movie, something of that sort, but I'm here because of passion, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Yeah. yeah. Of course, most definitely. And uh, of course, we talked uh, about Rush and of course now this Funkhead. So how do you even find the balance? Because Rush has their own demands. You have to like write music, you have performances. And then Funkhead is also here. How you, and, and you have work because music is not just like what you do 24-7. You have a day job as well. So how do you even find time to do all that? Mm. She's talked about passion, which is mm. true. So if you're passionate about something, mm. nine times out of ten, you'll find a way of doing it. Mm. Yeah. So um, fortunately or unfortunately, as you can see, we're only two. 
Yeah. So the fact that we only two means we are not yet um, dug upon the what do you call it the vein that is live performances. So we're not doing live for now at least until we fill up the, the cabin, get a nice guitarist, another bassist, and a drummer. So at least for now we are focusing on um, studio work. Mm, the audios, you're focusing on brand, you're focusing on videos. With Rush, it's a bit of both. So the fact that you're not dealing with live, um, with the fan cuts, means I get to spend that extra time with, with Rush. So Saturday, let's do this. Sunday, let's do this. And you begin to balance the game. All right. And Adrian right here mentioned he's a behind the scenes guy. So apart from like helping in the creative process, bringing new music to life, uh, what else do you do for the band? For the band? Yeah. Uh, good Lord. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> it's mostly, okay, so behind the scenes, like I said, doing scratch tracks. I don't know if that translates. So a scratch track is basically like you take an idea, mm -hmm. put it in a certain way, and then you send it to a Z. Uh, the early tracks, I was doing a lot of the post-production. Mm -hmm. But now these ones are being handled by a guy from Andromeda. Yeah. So, like one for seven, uh, most of that, I made most of that. And then Ozzy just added the guitars and the lyrics. Mm -hmm. So, it's a mix of, also, I think one thing people don't understand about the Funkets is like, it's not a close group. We have other projects with other people on their sides. Oh, nice. So, we're just doing Funket stuff, like the stuff with uh, other guys. So, hopefully, uh, you can have us back and you can share those. Uh, uh, also, of course, there's day jobs and stuff, but uh, it's, yeah. I don't know, I feel like for me, Funkets was always a creative outlet. Yeah. So when you, okay, I don't know if you know this, but we always, me and Albert joke that we are the engineers in the group, so <laughs> once you're done with your annoying day job, you come and you <laughs> vent through music and then you see where it goes. But so, Look at that. Yeah. Wait, so you guys are engineers by, engineers by day? Yeah, graduate engineers. Look at that. So, like, that's one of the, like, you have to, like, when she came for the auditions, they're like, so, oh, 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 what would you do? <laughs> would you do? <laughs> <laughs> would you do that? <laughs> because I can't imagine, like, I'm a present, like, nah, yeah. um, we don't do that here. Like, mm. next, would you do, I'm an engineer, okay, we're Steph's mama. Ah. Like, <laughs> is it, did it just happen coincidentally, or what I'm speaking about actually makes sense for the band? You have to be an engineer. He's not an engineer. Oh. Oh wow! I'm not an actually. You're not. Yeah. But we are we are teaching him. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. No listen. Yeah, he's done his first calculus class mm -hmm. successfully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 oh. So just add on what Edwin has said. Mm -hmm. um, again, he's actually underselling himself. Yeah. Um, I should also add that when we began the group, we were not just two. We were yeah. actually four. Yeah. And there's myself. There was Edwin, there is a fellow by the name of Michael, yeah. Mosid, and there's a lady by the name of Anne, Anne Dung. Oh, shout out to all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope they will show up. So the idea behind the Funkets um, was you have a three-man crew, mm -hmm. um, two producers, and he's also an excellent beat maker. Mm -hmm. So the idea was you have three creatives and then you have a revolving door of vocalists and oh. other collaborators okay. so you make a project and then you look for you look for a suitable vocalist and tell her or him do this track do this track but again this was 2010 2011 where the art scene wasn't as evolved as evolved as it is now yeah. so and naturally we had little to no equipment yeah. all we had was big dreams and <laughs> Huge, huge egos, and we said to ourselves, <laughs> No, let's do this. Yeah. So, over time, of course, life happens. So, I know we dealt with a lot of vocalists who moved on to other things. Um, some went to law school, some are practicing law. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Purity, mm -hmm. somewhere oh, out there. Um, there, was, there are a lot of other, somewhere, there's one who went to the army, um, Masharia, mm -hmm. out there. So, we've seen a lot of people come and go. But the fact that we can stand here 12 years later and be here with Edwin and still say we're still doing what we love, we are finding time for it, I think is a huge blessing. I know, right? And, and the scene, what's your take on the scene right now? Because we've seen, like, like I said, Russia winning um, awards, how people like Tetu being nominated. Are, what are you thinking? Do you think we're headed the right direction? Are we on the right track? Um, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think we're on the right track. 
we could definitely do more. There's always room for improvement. But with um, Rush taking us to the next stage, especially with the Freemars, mm -hmm. and shows like Y254 yeah. putting us on the pedestal so that people can know, guys, Kenyan rock makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, um, DJ Eddie Grimm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he's doing a lot for this Kenyan scene. rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the scene is headed in the right direction. Plus, there's something you're planning for next year. Yeah. Yeah, so Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. I'm a No, no, like what I'm going to say that we see Jari Bula. What are you trying to do? Like this is a new bar. No, but you can trust us. At Tambiam. We're live. To not be our I know, like I said. I know, I know, but yeah, but if you know, you guys are not ready, but it's cool. At least we have something to hope for, right? Yeah. And it's good news, definitely. Mm -hmm. right? Definitely good news. Yeah. And also, we, we are really very, very appreciative of Nick, Nick Wadi, who has, um, who we have thrown so many tracks at him, and he has um, had to deal with all our raw tracks, all of our changes, all of our tweaks. But he's really doing a lot for the rock scene, and we really appreciate him for that. Yeah. Because before we came across him, mm -hmm. we were looking for that sound that we could not find locally. Yeah. So he's he helped us push ourselves to greater heights. And yeah. so yes, we are to me sometime next year. Sometime next year. Kuna mavirus. Kuna mavirus. All right. We're looking forward to that, and yeah. it's great news. We really miss you. All right, but before we carry on, before we come to Rad, uh, we get to do that rock post thingy, you know? Yeah. yeah what do you yeah. call it? Udakuya rock. <laughs> <laughs>